So um, I hope everybody can see this um, slideshow that I have here. Please let me know if you can. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. Awesome. Okay. So on um, the first topic I'm going to um, kind of start off with today is the do's and don'ts um, for LinkedIn success. Um, a little bit about myself, um, like that was mentioned, I have spent a lot of time helping financial advisors um, up fast start and utilize their LinkedIn to successfully close business and also um, prospect as well. So yeah. Um, so the three topics I'm going to be covering along that um, that title will be branding, posting, and connecting. So branding, um, how you appear on LinkedIn. What do you look like? What would come to somebody's mind the first thing when they see your profile? Posting, so what times of day should you post? What content should you be posting and connecting? So what kind of messages are we sending friends, hopefully prospects, clients? Um, so yeah. Um, so the do's for branding. Um, your brand. What is your brand? What do you want people to think about when they see your profile, right? So your banner, that's going to be uh, the picture above your profile picture. So what does that look like? You want to make sure it's clear. You want to, a company logo may be good or something that I did for a long time was I had the U.S. Um, Senate building as my border because I live in D.C. So it kind of is coherent with where I am and what I do. Um, also to make sure it's professional, nothing with vulgar language or anything else like that or imagery, vulgar imagery. Um, and yeah, just think about what you want to convey to your audience. Also to profile pictures, make sure that it's visible, it's professional. A lot of people do this where they have the duck faces, right? Or you're in like a crop top and out on the beach somewhere or in a bathing suit that's not professional. That's not what another professional is going to look at and say, wow, I would love to work with that person or connect with that person, right? We want to make sure everything stays professional because that's going to be the best um, asset when branding yourself. Um, also too, with uh, profile pictures, if you're going to wear um, a light colored shirt, a darker background, as you can see here as mine as an example, that really helps draw the eye in. It looks clean. It looks professional. And then if you're going to have a light background, like maybe a white ball, try and maybe wear a darker suit that would really help um, to have that pop. Um, and then pretty much for messaging, make sure you have a nice bio. I always say answer the W's. So who you are, what you do. When you when and where do you do that? So if you are a marketing manager in DC, that's something you would want to say, I'm in DC. Or especially if it's something that has to do with licensing, right? You want to make sure I'm an insurance advisor in DC because you don't want to reach out to people in Chicago because then obviously you can't work with them and it's a waste of you and the client or prospect's time. Um, also to what you study or past experience that you have. That's kind of draws people in. It makes you credible, right? Uh, and where you are now. Um, and the best thing too, I would say to add in a bio is why do you do what you do? Do you like to help people? Do you really enjoy being creative? Whatever it is, just make sure you explain that because it makes it a little more interesting to read. Um, also endorsements, um, Make sure that if you have friends on LinkedIn or any other professionals that you work with, a boss, a coworker, have them endorse your skills. That shows a lot of value. It shows, oh, this person has credibility. I would like to work with that person. They have five people who said they did an amazing job. Or even two, if you are looking for a new job and your boss or manager or the HR person you're interviewing with they go on your LinkedIn, they're like, wow, this person has had a lot of experience. And there's a lot of people who say, hey, wow, she's very talented or he's very talented in what he does. Um, so yeah, and also too, a big thing is make sure when you, there's a part that says contact information, always either provide your email or your phone number because there will be people who might wanna get in contact with you. Make sure that's there. You don't have to have both, um, but try and have at least one. Okay, and then your content. What are you liking and commenting on? 
So the rule of thumb is, right, keep it professional. So I would always say try and steer clear of political or religious content. Now, obviously, never be ashamed of, you know, who you are and what you support, but try and keep it professional. A good rule of thumb is, would I say this in front of my boss or would I say this comment to anybody? If the answer is no, probably just keep it to yourself. Again, not telling anybody not to um, be proud of what they believe in, but just remember that everybody can see what you comment. And also too, when you like things and comment on things, they will come up on people's timeline of you saying something or liking something. Now, obviously, if you work for a senator, that's kind of hard to get away from. But if you're not in that field, again, just try and steer clear of it. If you want to post political and religious content, save that for your Instagram and your Twitter. <laughs> um, and also too, who you're following, that can be a really great indicator of what your interests are. And also too, it can help you appear in more searches for people who follow the same content as you. Um, if you're in marketing, following people who are kind of marketing gurus is really going to help you um, look adequate in what you're saying. And also too, it gives you more content to post because you're going to see things from people who have great ideas and you can go ahead and reshare that. Okay. So timing's a big one. Um, and I know there's a lot of different ideas on this from my personal experience. And I feel like what a lot of other applications believe Tuesday and Wednesday mornings are really just the best time to post. If you think about it, Mondays, everybody's kind of getting back in the swing of things. We know the saying, a hectic Monday or just another Monday, um, just another manic Monday, sorry. Uh, so we know that Mondays are just too much for people. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, everybody's pretty much back in the swing of things. It's morning, people have had their coffee, they're in tune to what they're doing and what's going on around them. Thursdays also work pretty well, but just remember with holidays and things like that, Thursdays can sometimes not be the best. I would steer clear of Fridays. Fridays, you know, can be good time to post, but if you think about it, how many times people are like, you know, kind of logged out of Friday. So just keep that in mind. I recommend no weekend posting. It just doesn't really work the way you'd like it to. I feel like that's more of an Instagram kind of thing. And then time frames too. Just think about when are people waking up and not doing work? 7 to 9 a.m. Most people are in the office by 9 or 8 a.m. And people are kind of getting the start of their day. 12 o'clock is most people's lunch breaks. So that's another good time. And then 5 to 6 p.m. as well. People are commuting home and a lot of people too use um, public transportation. So they could be on their phones and LinkedIn is probably one of the applications they'll be looking at on their commute home. Okay, and then posting. Um, if you're running out of content to post as a business owner, new job alerts are great. It shows that you're hiring, your business is growing. It also shows too that you are excited about the position, not just having it up on Indeed, you'll get more traction for that. Keep it positive as well. Um, if you are posting that you yourself got a new job, never go against your old employer. Never say anything rude about that past employer. It doesn't look um, good. And I think that's a rule of thumb, even for interviewing for new jobs. Another thing too is, if you have worked at a previous position and you're like, oh, I just got this new job with X, Y, and Z company, make sure to say thank you to your old company and any coworkers that you were close with. It's just another good look. And it also gives, um, gives you traction as well with that. Sorry, didn't mean for that to happen. Um, employee highlights, if you are a business owner showing oh, we just hired X, Y, and Z person. It's great for new content and just keeping things different. Company outings is another great thing to post. If you and a few of your coworkers went out for a happy hour, that's something postable. Um, networking events, same kind of thing. Polls is another great way to um, cause engagement on your profile. So for example, somebody like me, who's an advisor um, in insurance, something I might ask is, 
when's the last time um, you spoke with a financial advisor about life insurance? And then one of the questions might be, oh, do you have a life insurance policy? Do you not have a life insurance policy? The last time you got one was five years ago, because then I know, oh, I can reach out to this person because they took my poll. It gives kind of opens that door for me. And I can be like, hey, I saw you took my poll. You don't have a life insurance policy. Do you have five to 10 minutes to talk um, just so I can show you some products that um, might help you protect your family? Um, also, too, with posting videos, keep them short. Most of people's attention spans last five to eight seconds. Um, I'm sure you guys understand that. And I hope I haven't lost anybody at five to eight seconds on this uh, Zoom call. <laughs> and also finally show that you're an expert in your field, just showing that you're knowledgeable about the products you're selling or what you're talking about or any content that you're pushing, make sure it's accurate. Um, so. Also, a uh, last thing, this is a little off topic, but ChatGBT, it's an AI um, generated system. It can be very helpful for coming up with posts. If you type in, for example, for me, I would do a post about life insurance, right? And it will generate that. If you wanna simplify it, you can just uh, press simplify. If anybody has any questions about uh, ChatGBT at the end of the call, I would love to answer them as well. And then uh, third, we're moving on to hashtags, emojis, and editing your posts. Editing makes your algorithm lose visibility. So what I mean by that is pretty much if you edit your post right after posting it because you forgot a period or a comma or something like that, the computer system isn't going to show your post to as many people. Um, also keep your hashtags under four because the same kind of concept, if you have too many hashtags, it looks like spam to the algorithm. So it's not going to be as visible to as many users. I like to use emojis in place of periods. It's a great way to spice it up, give it a little, um, I guess you could say charm, <laughs> um, but don't go crazy with it. Remember, this is a professional platform and it should be used as such. Um, so we're going to do the do's of connecting now. Um, only get a certain amount of connections every week on the LinkedIn platform. And that's due to people, you know, kind of using it as a very sales-like platform. And I think LinkedIn changed that because there were so many people using it to spam people for sales. So you get 150, I believe, every week. So use them wisely. Don't just send it to everybody you possibly can. Try and figure out... Um, okay, what location do I want to connect with people? Do I want to connect with people in my hometown? Do I want to connect with people maybe to a new place that you're moving? Let's say you're moving to Florida. Well, and you're looking for a job, connecting with people in Florida might be a good idea for you. Um, but if you're using it in a sales way, who's your target market? Who's your niche? Uh, pretty much if let's say you want to work with real estate agents to maybe do um, an alignment, I would Google, or not Google, sorry, I would search in the engine bar, real estate agents. I would put in the location, Washington, DC, and that would help me to kind of narrow that target search or even companies too. Let's say you are a small tech company, right? And you're like, oh, I would love to find kind of restaurants because that's kind of our target market is restaurants to do technical support to put in restaurants and search and try and use the um, professions too, because a lot of those professions will be, okay, well, who would be in charge of that? So it'd be people in HR. So make sure you're using um, all of the search filters to be able to really find your target market since you do only get 150 connections a week. Um, another great thing is who can help you grow. One of the biggest things that I have found really helpful in my uh, career has been having um, mentors. Mentors are a great way to meet people, learn more, and also to just ask questions when you're stuck because nobody is perfect. Everybody needs to keep learning. That's how we become even more successful than we are. You're always one day better than you were yesterday. So make sure you're reaching out to to maybe see somebody else's content that can help you grow um, in your profession. And send a greeting message before asking for something. So sometimes people will 
just right off the bat send you the sales message and you know it when you see it and you're like, I don't know who this is. And you can already tell the message is salesy. They're not going to open it and they're not going to respond to it. So send a greeting message. Um, my favorite one to use is, hey, Joe, great to connect. I hope you have a great rest of your week. That's it. Don't send another message after that. Wait a few weeks and use that as a way to kind of have that face value, I guess you could say, without just jumping right in to try and sell somebody something or ask them for something. Make yourself more visible first. Um, with prospecting, um, keep it simple when reaching out with messaging as well. You don't want to be giving people this long, drawn-on message. Remember, like I said, most people will tune you out within the first few seconds. Um, and we kind of went over this before in your bio, but be direct. Who are you? What do you want? When do you want it? And why should they consider you, right? Get to the point. People are very busy. We're all busy. Just remember that your prospects and future clients are busy as well. Um, another great rule of thumb is the four C's. Certainty, clarity, confidence, and courage. You want to make sure you're certain about what you're speaking on. You want to make sure it's clear to the point where a child could understand the message. You want to show confidence, not seem shaky in what you're asking or seem scared. You are the expert. Keep that in mind and do your research to find high value clients as well. It is possible to find people who are perfect for your target market. Just put in the work, make sure you're using those search filters. Um, and then I want to get into the selling now um, of the dues for LinkedIn. The prospect must love your product. The prospect must trust and connect with you or the prospect must trust and connect with the company. So if you don't have one of those three things, you're kind of fighting an uphill battle there. So make sure that you're showing that your product is worth loving if you're selling a product or show that the prospect can trust you. So how could the prospect trust you? Well, that would go back to having those endorsements and appearing like an expert in your field. Um, or the prospect must trust and connect with your company. Again, a great thing to post might be, oh, well, my company just won this award this year. That's a great way to establish that trust. So you look credible when reaching out and speaking with prospects. Um, a great way to start an email is great to connect or email, sorry, a LinkedIn message. I apologize. A great way to do that is just great to connect. It's easy. It's simple. It's nice. Nothing crazy to it. Um, like I said, be direct. And the last thing I wanted to touch on this part is the power of virtual coffees. That's been probably one of my favorite things and most productive things with LinkedIn messaging is, hey, John, would you like to sit down and do a virtual coffee after I've had a few um, a few messages of communication, whether it was, hey, congrats on your work anniversary. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. And I'm like, you're welcome. By the way, I saw that you're in this field. Would you by chance have time for a virtual coffee on Monday at 11 a.m.? Please let me know all the best, Taylor. And that's just a great way to kind of learn more about other professionals or even kind of work into more of a sales meeting as well. Um, so here's more on selling continued um, with LinkedIn. Uh, like I talked about the virtual coffees, they're a really great idea. If you're kind of like, I don't know where to really start by messaging people, meeting people, or even selling, virtual coffees are awesome and they work. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a virtual coffee is a great time. Um, most people will tell you 10 a.m. That's what I found works the best. Always respond to a message, even if the answer is no, right? So if you reach out to me and you say, hey, Taylor, um, I'm not interested, no thank you. I would say, oh, that's that's great. I completely understand. Now would be a great time to ask for a referral maybe, right? To somebody else need my, need my services that you know of, or can you point me in the direction of somebody who would sit on a virtual coffee with me and so I can learn more? Always being able to ask for a referral can really help you go a long way. Um, also too, make sure you're taking notes on the prospect. And like I said, LinkedIn is so valuable for taking notes on. 
You can find out where they went to school. That's a great way to connect with somebody as well. Hey, I saw you went to, I went to Shippensburg, right? So I saw you went to Shippensburg University. Great to connect with another uh, SHIP alum. And it's a great way to connect with people. Um, so make sure you're taking notes, seeing where they worked. Oh, I saw that you worked at Facebook uh, Meta. Well, I worked there a few years ago too. And you can kind of create that connection with them as well. Um, don't give too many available times for sending out messages too. If you give people too many options, it will make them be like kind of stressed out almost, or it will make them not make a firm decision. So you have to be the direct one. You have to be the firm one when making a decision. Another great thing is use positive words. Get no problem, don't worry, out of your vocabulary. It's kind of like at Chick-fil-A, we'll see, everybody will say, oh, it's my pleasure. Start getting in that positive mindset of speaking to people in a positive tone because no problem could easily be replaced with, I completely understand. Do you see how that has a more positive effect um, when speaking with somebody? Um, another great way thing too is before you... Um, say anything to someone, even if it is a no, thank them for their time. Everybody's busy, you're busy, I'm busy. Um, that kind of just politeness goes a long way with a lot of people. Even remember, even if the answer is no, I don't wanna talk to you, thanking them just really helps out with that. Um, and tell them you're going to follow up regardless of their answer. A great thing to do is say, hey, I completely understand that you are busy right now. I'm going to follow up with you in a few months just to check in. Something as simple as letting them know means that they're going to be expecting a message from you instead of just letting the door close. Keep it cracked because you never know everybody's situation changes and telling people you're going to follow up with them regardless of the answer just help keep, helps keep that door open. Um, and then I did uh, just write out a few um, messages here. Um, not interested, not at this time. A great example. Thanks for taking the time to respond. I completely understand. I'll reach out to you in a few months just to check in. Have a great rest of your week. It's very simple and it makes you seem like you understand their pain points and where they're coming from of being busy or being on vacation. It makes you more um, understanding and honestly more liked to talk with. Um, and then another example here, I have this one um, when I worked for financial advisors a few years ago, the name, great to connect again and make sure um, these people that you've already sent out a first initial message to, this is, wouldn't be the first message I'd sell, so send to somebody, right? I want to send a great to connect with you. Hope you have a great week. Goodbye. This would be a second or a third connection point for me on LinkedIn. Um, I would like to set up a virtual meeting with you or coffee on Wednesday at this time, straight to the point. Um, what I offer you, I would be helping you achieve your financial goals and my credibility. My partner and I work with some of your colleagues at EY. We specialize in making appropriate financial decisions while maximizing company benefits in the following ways. These are all the things very clear and comprehensive what I can offer you and help you with, thanks. And then your name, very simple to the point. They know why I'm reaching out, what I want for them and what time I'm available. Um, and I'm ready to take any questions. Um, I wanted to make sure we had enough time for that. <laughs> well, wonderful. Cause we have a lot of questions awesome. that come in. <laughs> yeah. I did. Um, so if anyone has any more questions, you can put them in the Q&A. There's a button at the bottom of your screen that says Q&A, but I know some people put them in the chat. I got you covered too. Um, so we will get through all of those. Um, the first one we have, can I achieve the same as what you were explaining with the free version of LinkedIn or do I have to upgrade? Um, so the free version of LinkedIn works pretty much the same. The only thing is, is you there are some... Um, special things to it. So you can hide if you're creeping on somebody's profile, you can get more, um, more filters for searching, but yes, you can do this with the free application. I don't like to spend money that I don't need to spend. So I have only had the, um, 
the pay trial version of LinkedIn once when I had the free trial. I use just regular old LinkedIn. <laughs> Wonderful. What are your thoughts on accepting connection requests from those who don't benefit you? For example, if I'm trying to get out of a specific industry, I don't want to connect with those in that industry. Do you decline that invite to connect or do you connect and unfollow them? I would say for LinkedIn, it's kind of a numbers game, right? Because if that connection can like your posts and it sounds kind of selfish to say, right? Maybe you don't want to be their friend, right? You could care less with their posting, but the, if they could be of value to you to liking your content, that could be a reason to um, keep them in your network and let them accept, um, let them come to you and ask to connect because somebody sending you a connection isn't going to waste your connection, that 150 a week. That's not going to be wasted by you. That's them wasting that on you, if that makes sense. I hope I phrased that correctly. <laughs> Um, is the editing post impact on the algorithm limited to LinkedIn or does that uh, impact the other social media as well? Um, so I'm not sure. I do not use Twitter. I know nothing about Twitter um, or really Facebook, to be honest, but I do believe only for LinkedIn and I don't think it has any effect on Instagram, but please do not mark my words on that. I'm only pretty solid on um, LinkedIn. <laughs> Tiny little plug, just letting you know we have a social media summit on September 19th. Might be a good place to ask that question. Um, I'm sure they would know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, let's see, what are some good strategies for the endless connect and pitch messages that we get pretty much daily? Um. When you go to connect with somebody, and I guess that kind of goes back to the last question of, um, or two questions ago about connecting with people of an industry you're trying to get out of, who's maybe trying to give you a job or sell you something is most of the time when they are trying to sell you something and it is that thought, it's not an actual individual, it will, the message will appear when you go to see, oh, who just tried to connect with me? The message will appear in that. So if you see it looks like they sent you some long drawn out message, it's probably because they're trying to sell you something. So I would just say not to connect with them. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of sad right now. I think LinkedIn is starting to really realize that it does have a lot of people like myself, right? I'm in insurance. So I'm messaging people all the time to make sales. And I think LinkedIn's caught on to that. Hence why they started doing the only connect with 150 people a week. So um, it is a problem and I'm sure there will be um, uh, more, um, more policies and things around that to come up for sure. Thank you. Um, Dan says, can you show an example of using emojis instead of punctuation? I don't um, know if you're able to show on your LinkedIn or yes. anything. Sorry, I'm not sure. I guess I'm going to stop sharing real quick and then let me pull up my LinkedIn. While you're doing that, I'll answer a question that I can actually answer. Will this presentation be available to watch again? Yes. Um, it takes us just a little bit of time to get it edited and get it sent out. But yes, um, there will be a replay. So Juliet, um, you will be able to watch this and the other two speakers um, again. Okay, share a screen. There we go. Share. Okay, awesome. So can everybody see my LinkedIn? Just wanna make sure. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I would say another um, great way to use emojis. So I just, um, I started my new job on Monday. So here's a great example, right? To be a heading using these little, um, I guess they're like confetti shooters or whatever, using that to kind of draw in um, people is a great way. Sorry, I do have some stuff on here, but like here below LinkedIn community, I'm curious to see when everyone, where everyone is in the home buying process. Instead of using a period there, I use the, an emoji of a little home. 
um, or down here for my BNI, I used a smiley face instead of an exclamation point. Um, so yes, I can see you had no more than four hashtags and all the other yeah. things that I learned from this. Or like even two, like instead of using one, two, three, four on this, I used. Um, now this post didn't do so well, but <laughs> having like an emojis and trying it out too, like that's the other thing with LinkedIn is really, um, it's like A to B testing, right? Really see what works. Sometimes a subject line, for example, anybody who's in email marketing will tell you this. You try subject um, lines, right? You might try a hundred subject lines and then try another different hundred subject lines. So just kind of testing it out too, but just don't get crazy with the emojis because it will make you not look so professional and not be so credible. I even messed up here too um, with the exclamation point that should not be there. And I should be, put the star there instead of that exclamation point. <laughs> you didn't go back and edit it. So that way you wouldn't, yep. <laughs> you wouldn't mess up the algorithm. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you for those examples. I appreciate you pulling up your own LinkedIn for us. Um, when you reach out to someone um, at an organization for an open job role that you're interested in and you don't receive a response, should you send a follow-up message in a few weeks? And if yes, can you please share an example um, of what you would send in that follow-up message? Um, so I would try, so you sent the, um, let me just make sure I'm understanding this correctly. You applied for the position, correct? Or they reached out to you on LinkedIn about the position, you messaged back. Instead of going back on LinkedIn, I would reach, try and find the company's email. And that's what I would do. I would honestly send an email or call. I, I know it sounds really old school, but when I first started applying for jobs, every job I applied for, I would wait three days and I would call them. My, um, my stepmom too, she has a great story. She, um, she graduated from Westchester University and she wanted to work at Johnson and Johnson really, really bad. And, you know, she wasn't the most, she didn't have the best grades, but she wanted to be there. And she told me once a week, she just kept calling Johnson and Johnson as this job available. And they were like, we'll let you know, we'll let you know. And finally the lady at the front uh, desk who was like doing the hiring, they were like, hi, Jacqueline. They're like, sure, come in for another interview. <laughs> like they got so annoyed with her following up that they just gave her the job. So that's something I would recommend doing is don't stop bothering people until they tell you no. Because the worst that can happen is they tell you, no, if you show you really want something, then you should be able to get it, hopefully. <laughs> Wonderful. We have another one from Patrick. Um, when trying to sell to potential clients, I find a lot of my team struggles with the pitch. What are some pointers I should have my team use for overthinkers who are not sure where to start or who are nervous? Um, could you repeat that one time, one more time? I'm sorry. No problem. It's a long one. Sorry. Um, he said, when trying to sell potential clients, I find a lot of my team struggles with the pitch. What are some pointers that I should have my team use for those of the, on the team that are overthinkers or who are nervous? Um, I would say exposure. So I would say going to networking events, right? Getting really out of your shell, getting more comfortable with talking with people, I would say is one, um, really good way. I'd say also to reading sales books. Um, a lot of this presentation today was influenced by The Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belford, one of the best sales books I've ever read in my entire life. It's awesome. So I would say to reading books and just practicing, 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 practicing an elevator pitch, practicing with each other and just making it become so natural. Because if you do something so many times, it's not going to feel off to you. It'll just feel normal. Um, I used to actually, when I was in college, I was very, 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 very shy. And I joined a sorority and other clubs. And it really took me out of my shell because I was then forced to talk with people. Right. So I would say um, that's a big one. Make them join networking events and networking groups like BNI, like a networking after work. Um, it will really, I think, bring value to your employees and to you as a business owner. Is that something that you might like recommend using AI for too? Sometimes when I like can't make myself get started or can't get myself to like contact someone, I ask 
chat GPT what they would say. And then I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound dumb. Like whatever I was thinking, like, oh no, like that's, that's an okay thing to say. Like that, it just gives me some reassurance and gives me some things to like some starting points of like, oh, I could say this and this or like, okay, I could do this and this. Yeah. And sorry, I think I was a little confused by the question. So I apologize. And I think for in-person, um, definitely the networking events, but for, yeah, for like things like phone calls, coming up with like a script is a great way or reading a book, um, like the way of the wolf. I love that book, but it's like tonality, for example, right? A lot of people don't think about it, but if you're on the phone with somebody and they're very monotoned, you're not going to be all bubbly and happy and excited. You're going to be more calm, more reserved and kind of change your tone to match theirs. Now, if you pick up the phone and they're kind of more vocal, you're going to be more vocal. You want to mirror that. Another great thing too, um, is if you do do sales or a lot of, um, client, like call work, get a mirror and set it up on your desk. I did this for the longest time and just look at yourself and your facial expressions. If you're sitting slumped in your chair, looking sad, that's how you're probably going to sound. So I would say that's another um, great thing to do. And I think that um, she would also recommend reading this one book, <laughs> The Way of the Wolf. <laughs> I think everyone should just go get that one too. I'm going to go ahead and put that in as a suggestion because I feel like you really like that one. It was, it was so helpful. I, um, I used to work at Prudential. So um, before I left, I worked for seven financial advisors here in DC. And I wrote a training manual for my job because my job wasn't um, like standard and pretty much most of that training manual was, was written from that book. <laughs> awesome. Um, Art asks, how do you avoid spam when you post your phone or email address? So that's kind of just playing with fire. Honestly, um, it's really hard to do. I know there's might be a way through email to set that up, but it is hard, especially, and I'll be honest too, for somebody like me, when I'm out hunting for prospects and hunting for emails, if I see you have an email, I will write down your email if you do not message me and I will send you an email about insurance. <laughs> so there are people like me, we are not going anywhere and we will get your email and find it. But that's kind of too, would you rather miss out on an opportunity or have, you know, some people send you emails? I would say now the bots aren't going to pick up on your emails, but an individual like me who is prospecting for themselves, I will find it. So I'm I actually had a question myself. Um, since you message so many people and like you write down their emails and how do you keep track of everybody? How do you keep a track of everyone who's on like your first outreach, everyone who's on a second outreach, who you have emails for? Um, I would say the applications that I love the best are is, um, client link or Salesforce. They're wonderful applications. Um, and if you don't have, if you're a really small business or you're doing something like a private contractor and you don't have the money to invest in that for your business, a simple Excel sheet is great because you can do tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four. And for the month of August, right. Put in everybody you contacted that way, you know, cause there's a three month waiting period. So after you contact somebody in August, I know in September, October and November, I'm going to be contacting everybody I contacted in August. So if you look at your tabs, that's how you can keep track of that in Excel, but the best applications for it, I have to say are Salesforce and client link and their sister companies. Awesome. Thank you. This isn't a question, but Kristen said it and I just thought it was really good. So I'm going to read it anyways. Um, she said, I strongly recommend being genuine um, and being curious. And someone just messaged that I lost it. Sorry. Uh, asking questions about what problems or information they are facing or seeking um, because AI won't know that. And it takes active listening, which I just thought was really good. Yeah. Finding their pain point, right? What would make them switch? What would make them need your service? What value could you bring them? And you would only know the value that you could bring them by asking questions. So I agree hundred percent. Yeah. And Patrick added in um, that he loves monday.com for keeping track. So um, if anyone wants to check out that one as well, he he's highly recommending that. Um, so your team can, everyone can see where everyone is, which is good. Um, Steven said he's looking for a new job opportunity at the moment. Is there a preferred way to make it clear in his LinkedIn profile that he's open to new opportunities outside of where he's living now and that he's open to relocation. 
Um, so I would say that's something you can put in your bio. And there's also two, if you go to your profile picture, I forget the name of it, but there will be a green thing you can put on your profile picture circle and it will say hashtag open to work. Um, you could also too put hashtag open to work in your bio or search that. And also to just put open to relocating. Um, a lot of times when you go to fill out applications, they will, that's one of the main questions they ask. Are you open to relocating? Awesome. And then we had two other recommendations come in for tracking um, Notion and HubSpot. So in case anyone else was curious on how to keep track of it all. Um, Pamela said, what is a good cadence to follow when contacting prospects? Um, I would say for LinkedIn, um, sending that first initial greeting message, hey, great to connect. Joe, hope you have a great rest of your week. And then the second message would be very direct. Hey, I, if you really want to be as direct as possible, you can say what kind of services you offer. If you want to be a little more sly about it, virtual coffees are great. I did that a lot um, when I was working um, in more of the financial services sector where it was, hey, you want to connect for a virtual coffee after a few messages back and forth. So it depends how direct you want to be. Um, also to make sure you're using things like if they're an alumni, right? That's a reason to reach out to somebody if they went to the same school as you or if they worked at a company that you worked at. There's a lot of reasons to reach out to people. So find one of those and use it. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, just for a couple more recommendations, these ones are for learning how to pitch and learning how to get better. Um, so back to that question for people who are uncertain um, or nervous, um, TJ recommended Dale Carnegie or Sandler Selling Systems. They're good ways to get better at pitching and to learn that. Um, JR said, is it worth using any of the paid social media tools like Hootsuite to manage your personal pages on LinkedIn? I'd say no, I think, and I'm not saying, I. so I used to work in social media too, so I'm not downgrading anybody who works in that field, please do not get me wrong. But I think if you spend a lot of time doing your research, right, like anything else, you can become somewhat of an expert. So I would say, don't waste, don't waste your money. But if you don't have a lot of time, like that's something where I realized um, as working in this industry to work with clients, market, do all of these things, I didn't have enough time to do anymore. So I would say then it's worth it. But if you have the time, just do it. You'll figure it out. YouTube's a great source and LinkedIn learnings are great sources too. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We have, we have more. So I finished up the ones that are in the Q&A. So if anyone has more for the, um, and they want them to, me to be able to find them easily, put them in the Q&A. Um, and right now I am going through the webinar chat. So um, bear with me just a little bit. Um, I had one of the kids, sorry. Um, so D, I had a question um, for whoever's logged in as D, D, E, E. Your question is what is the best way to use number? But I'm not sure exactly what you meant. If you wanted to clarify in the Q&A session, I'd be happy to ask your question. I'm just not positive. Um, Jerry said, how do you move beyond the virtual coffee or a virtual or other virtual connection? This pertains to providing professional services like real estate appraisal, and he would like to see how we can get our team in front of a larger audience in person to offer presentations. Um, so how do you move beyond the virtual coffee or virtual connection to an in-person? I would say just letting them know. Um, so that's something great if you don't have a business development development manager. That's something I would look into doing or maybe having somebody who works there kind of move into that role a little bit as well. And just letting them know, hey, this was really great. I would love to stop by um, your office sometime next week. What time normally works best for you? And just say you're going to do something instead of ask, say you're going to do something and show up but never come empty handed, right? So if you are going to show up at somebody's work, make sure you find a time that's good, normally 12 o'clock and bring donuts, bring coffee, right? Especially for those gatekeepers too, you need to be, you can't come empty handed because they will not let you in the door. So that's what I would say is tell them you're coming, find a good time, tell them you're coming and show up not empty handed. Wonderful. Um, um... 
Kristen said, what are the newest LinkedIn features that can help people expand and connect better? So I know you talked a lot about virtual coffee. Are there any other features that you really love for that? Um, I would say the LinkedIn learnings are great. I'm not sure if that's really a new feature, but I would say they're pretty great. Um, hashtags to just really clicking on those hashtags and seeing where it brings you. Um, and I think honestly, too, that's a great question for me to do more research on. So I will say <laughs> there's always something new, right? There's always, yep, something, to there's learn. always something to learn. Um, Yanni said, what is a sample message to network for job prospects? So what's something that you would send in a message for that? For job process, I'm looking for the job or, so, or I'm trying to get people to take the job. If Yanni wants to clarify, <laughs> I'm not sure. It's not my question, unfortunately. We'll move on and see if he clarifies. Um, Kristen said, one oh. goal I have is to build my network of younger contacts who are entering the field, who are, have been in the field for less than eight years. Any tips on pitching those folks? Um, yeah, so if you go to, sorry, I'm going to make sure I explain this correctly. So I'm going into my LinkedIn here. If you want to go, let's say we'll do. Um, you can screen, you can screen share if you want to. They don't need to see me. Don't worry. Um, so if I wanted to do HR, people in HR, you can normally filter out um, what companies they're in which is helpful. Also, um, company size, uh, maybe there's not a way to do that. So if you're looking for a job, there is a way to search if it's a senior associate position. I'm not really seeing a way here to do that if I'm just I searching. Think, next I way. think that Kristen is looking to reach out to people who have been in the field for less than eight years. Perhaps she's recruiting or something, um, but she's looking for others, not looking for a position herself, I, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not really sure, to be honest, again, on that, but that's too maybe going um, going through like um, the university. So if it's like schools, that could be something where it's like, oh, okay, let me search. I'll even search my ship. Shippensburg University. And I would even just go through like your schools here. Sorry, I can share. Yes, Kristen said she is looking to diversify her network with younger people because her network keeps retiring. Gotcha. Yeah, I would um I would even just go. So this is where I went to school at. I would go to Shippensburg University and okay, well, let me see. So insights of Shippensburg University, people highlights 25, 275 alumni work here. Um, people who study poli sci, what I studied, and people also too, if you go on the school's post, right? So all of these people liked this post. So I know this kid personally, right? He was in my Greek life with me and all of these people are on the younger end. You're going to more likely like your school's post if you still go to that school. <laughs> I would say if I'm, I don't know, when I'm 50, I'm probably not going to be checking on my, my university's um, LinkedIn as much as I am now, because you probably start to not care as much. <laughs> oh, so that's um, a good idea. So to look in organizations geared for younger people, like yeah, universities, but also like young professional networks, would you say? Yeah, I would say too. I would say um, like if we look at young, even if you just type in young professionals, maybe, and even see maybe even a hashtag young aspiring. So right here, it says young aspiring marketing professional, young professional. So even people's bios have that as well. And actually my bio, um, please do not look at my bio, anybody. I did not write my about me section. I fired the marketing company who was working for me. Um, so please don't use mine as an example. Um, I need to change that. But you can see to a lot of people in their um, in their bios as well will say young professional. And mine, before it got changed, it said young professional aspiring to help people achieve their financial goals. So it's in people's bios or even search it as a hashtag to I guess you could see what comes up. But yeah, that's what I would recommend. See young professionals came up here. So then maybe who liked it? Okay, this person looks pretty young. That guy is pretty young. Um, all of these people look fairly young. So that's another piece of advice I'd have. 
Awesome. So Yanni wrote back in. Um, so his question was, what's a sample message to network for job prospects? And he clarified if you are looking for a job. If you're looking for a job. Um, so so you say you're looking for a job, you're messaging a company. What would, what would you say to them? So I would definitely um, try and probably take that off LinkedIn. I would look more at um, emailing or calling the company. But if you want to really use LinkedIn, you can see who's offering the job. So I'm not sure if it shows here, but like sometimes it will show you who posts the job. And if that person posts, sorry, I don't know how to take my text messages off my computer. Um, but sometimes you can see who posts the job. I'm trying to find an example, I apologize. And I'm not seeing one, but if somebody posts the job, you could always message them. But I would, for a rule of thumb, I would definitely reach out through email or phone calling. Okay, so not the best use of the, the LinkedIn message. Yes. Awesome. Um, we, I, so I believe that we are down to our last question. So if anyone else has a question, the Q&A is the best spot for it. Um, I'm also looking at the chat, obviously. Um, oh, actually, Kristen, a different Kristen, there's several, um, mentioned that you can search by graduation year from a, from a college. So oh, if you're yeah. only looking for eight years out, you could focus on graduation years that are eight years ago to now. Um, so that's a great tip too. Thank you. I love these comments. Um, okay, we've got two more now. Um, Ashanti said, is it a good idea to use the AI feature LinkedIn provided when wanting to send a message? How would I navigate that with a recruiter? So using AI, so something like a, a chat JBT to send a recruiter a message? I understanding that correctly. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's tough when they're not my questions, right? Um, I'll just read it again and, and okay. then you can answer whatever iteration of that question makes sense to you. Is it a good idea to use the AI feature LinkedIn provided when wanting to send a message? How would I navigate that with a recruiter? I would say you can. Um, just be careful because remember, you are smarter than a robot. And I know it feels like we're not sometimes because like you can see, I'm having some brain mush up in here as well. <laughs> but just remember, you're doing great. You're than a, a robot. Um, make sure you can edit the question. If there's no way to um, edit the comment, then probably just do it yourself. Um, and also, too, a lot of it's very simplistic. So like I said, try and get the word no out of your vocabulary. So never say not interested or not at this time. Try and really take that away. Um, so yeah. So Kathleen provided a little bit of insight that's going to help. There's an AI function on LinkedIn, but it's just rolling out. So some people have it and some people don't. So you may not know what we're talking about yet for everybody. Um, some of you will have an AI function on LinkedIn, which you can start playing with and seeing how it works for you. A lot of us, like I, I was confused. Um, I don't have it yet. So they're apparently just now rolling it out. Um, so that has something to do with that. Um, Dee said, what is the best? Oh, okay. I'm really sorry, Dee. I, my... Now I'm the one with the brain mush. She was asking the best way to use a hashtag. And I was like, the best way to use numbers. I don't understand. <laughs> no, that's on me. Um, D would like to know the best way to use hashtags. That's um, on me, I sorry. Say it's probably whatever you're trying to really, um, what type of audience you're trying to um, really reach. So if I'm having, for example, I host, I'm in charge of hosting our BNI networking events. So when I'm trying to do that, I'll put like hashtag networking, right? And hashtag happy hour. Cause I know if anybody's searching that and then I'll put the location as well. So hashtag DMV um, stands for DC, Maryland, Virginia area. So I use those hashtags cause they help to kind of show people what we're doing and where we are. Wonderful. Um, do recruiters search off hashtags to find people? That's from Kathleen. I'm not sure. Um, I've never been a recruiter, but that's a really good um, question. And I'm sorry, I can't answer that one. That's fine. That's okay. I, I think, I believe you did it. I believe that was the very last one. Um, so thank you so much for presenting. I feel like, um, I mean, you did an amazing job with your presentation, but you really were able to roll with a lot of Q and A. <laughs> So thank you so much for answering all of our questions. I appreciate it so much.
Of course. Thank you, everybody. I hope um, you guys have a great rest of your day. And I hope that this was helpful. And please feel free um, to reach out to me. I'm going to update my LinkedIn email as well today. Sorry, I started my new job yesterday. So please bear with me. And I'm really happy. It seems like we had a full house. So um, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs>